what we're going to do with that reorg is make a true split between science and policy, bringing more people in on the policy side, and I'll get to that, a little bit more to that uh, as we go forward. The, the issues that we've highlighted uh, continue to be access to the resources. As the governor said, the shellfish industry was, uh, was one of the first priorities, and we have, uh, we have a new focus effort opened up an additional 2,000 acres of flat. Regulatory streamlining component that uh, Brian talked about earlier. Uh, I combine our regulatory folks um, with our aquaculture leasing staff. Uh, this is a, be a new team approach. We'll expedite the aquaculture leasing process while also allowing us to review all current regulations. I want to make sure we go through all of our laws and all of our regulations to ensure that they're needed and to ensure that they're not creating roadblocks accessing resources. Efficiency and cost savings. Our licensing division is now going to be placed under the Bureau of Marine Patrol. This consolidation of duties will ensure the staff to be cross-trained and hereby allowed for better customer service. And that's truly what licensing should be. When you come to Hollowell, I demand that you get the best customer service you can get. It's all about ensuring that you understand the process and that my staff and the staff within the department are all helping you to, to their best available, uh, the best of their availability. And then proactive resource management. We've, gone, we've begun the discussions regarding the value of state fisheries management plans. Beginning with the Sears and Zone Council, we found enthusiasm for the concept of developing goals and objectives that will give both managers and clear path forward. The development of fisheries management plans, I believe, are going to be key to moving, this, to moving the industries forward. See, starting with the sea urgent fishery, looking through at the soft fisheries, looking at the lobster fishery. The lobster fishery is a great example. I talked about that uh, at an earlier meeting. I do not want to be in a situation like Southern New England. This industry in this state cannot afford to wait to see an action within another law. We need to make sure that we control our own destiny. And I believe with the development of fishery management plans, we can put something in place that will help guide the department and help guide the industry. I plan to focus the department's time and resources also on the following issues. As the governor noted earlier, the promotion of all means sea proof will improve the profitability across all sectors. Ensuring that more of the product that the land remains is processed in land to capture those value added value, value, value benefits. And addressing the issues associated with both the smooth transition to into and out of Maine fisheries. We need to make Maine a competitive place for all of these fisheries to do business. There continues to be struggles between access to the resource and the protection of the resource. We need to continue to have those broad discussions. And I'm going to challenge everybody in this room and all of and, and everybody in all of these industries to continue to call on the department and challenge us to find ways to help you. I'm ready to facilitate the conversations and truly that's what I believe my role is. The department is not here. Obviously, we're resource managers and we have to make tough decisions. But we need to be here for you. My door is open. Access to this agency is at its highest right now. And we need to continue to improve the access to the agency uh, for all of you. And uh, with that, I want to shut up now. And uh, I'd rather answer your questions than, than sit up here and just continue to talk. So, uh, does anybody have any questions? <laughs> Anybody have any questions? <coughs> Thank you. Would you repeat the question? So the, the question was, what is the, the governor's plans and the department's plans to bring the boats back, uh, ground fish boats back to Maine? Um, that continues to remain a priority. Uh, for this governor and for this administration. 
we need to have conversations about uh, all of, all aspects of the ground. Uh, you guys know what we're facing right now with uh, the thought crisis that we have, looking at other uh, issues that are coming down the road, potentially impacts to other stocks with further reduction. Uh, we need to be creative. I think we need to look at finding ways to uh, expand on, uh, potentially expand on the current banking system to use that as a possibility. We definitely need to lift the, or change the MOA as it stands for the current banks. So I would vote to participate in that system uh, and we'll continue those discussions with, with no to try to resolve those uh, in the area of the future. Um, a question was asked to me earlier, and probably somebody's going to be waiting to ask that. Uh, you know, the big question, drag not lost. Uh, that conversation is going to have to happen at some point. And uh, it's not whether we support it or whether we don't support it. The fact of the matter is the conversation has to happen as part of, uh, as part of the equation to address uh, issues within the ground fishing industry. Uh, if we can find a way to do it so it's resource neutral, it creates no other additional impacts, uh, it is enforceable, and the conversation has to happen. I challenge both the ground fishing industry and the water industry to have those conversations and to uh, and for, and the department can uh, facilitate those. At the end of the day, and I'll tell you all just what I told the legislature, at the end of the day, the back to the political question. The legislature, you know, Representative Perry, um, that, is, that is up to the legislature to solve, to solve that, uh, that problem. But, uh, any, anything maybe that, uh, that we can do beyond those facilitating those type of conversations we'll continue to do. Uh, and I look forward to all any any and all what we from all Potentially 
get out of the, out of the fishery if they don't want to act, if they don't want to use a license for that year, you get back in and leave flexibility for others who may be wanting to access the fishery. Those conversations have to happen. So we need to we need to kind of deal with all of them. That said, the legislature last year passed a resolve to look at the limited entry system within the law. I believe there's a lot that we can learn by this process. What it did, the resolve directed the department to hire a third party to look at this the lobster fishery and the limited entry side of it and its benefit to conservation, its benefit to the industry, um, and the benefits to the economy. We're gonna we finalize an RFP, that RFP will be going out in two weeks to hire this third party. I think we can use what we what we gain from this review and the lessons learned is what we're going to get back from it to look at all fisheries and to have a conversation with the industry about finding different ways to do business in this state. Does that mean we're going to change at the end of the at the uh, at the end of the uh, at the end of the year? It'll be up to the legislature find, to, to find and make changes. But I think now is a great time, especially with the water industry, because of resources healthy. Um, now is a great time to have conversations about potential change. I'm not going to drive change. I want to hear about change from the industry and how we may be able to do that. So, uh, Rob, I see your hand up that. Oh, we got another one right here. I'm sorry. I'm Kyle Murdoch from Tenants Harbor, and I have a question about the right whale vertical line regulations and with they're changing the risk model that the MRMA showed us this morning. Yep. Now, uh, I know that it's a big cost to a lobster business. More and more clover they have to replace with synchro. And synchro has to be replaced more frequently than clover does. And uh, when I was an EMT, we were taught that uh, there's a big difference between a seizure patient who gets in a car accident because of the seizure someone who gets in a car accident and has a seizure because of the injury. So bringing that to the right whales, is there any data available about uh, whales that have become entangled because they were struck by ships? And are those whales uh, statistically irrelevant to uh, so, so I don't have the full answer to this. I can get you more detail on, on the data if you want. Um, but ship strikes are obviously um, caught up with mortality with red whales. There is also a cause of mortality with, with entanglements uh, from fishing gear, not, not just lobster gear. Um, I think from, from my standpoint, the department has done a, a great job. The industry has done an even better job of coming to the table to, to develop a proposal to deal with the vertical line reduction. Our, our proposal reduces vertical lines by uh, roughly 14 or 15 percent. The, uh, the proposal is being looked at by Minister uh, Town for further evaluation. Uh, you know, this, this, this is there more we can do? Um, maybe. And it's the MLA model that is being worked on right now that may actually help give us some additional information on areas that need to be uh, regulated as far as the vertical lines. My goal is to try to keep the, this, this regulation as far out to sea as we possibly can at the end of the day so we have less impact on the issue. Um, as far as the day ago, I'll have to go back to one after the back here on the Pacific so the day that I'm at the day. I'm Commissioner. Uh, my name is Robert Ray from Stonington. I'm the Zones and Council member. Uh, my question is, is uh, I heard that heron and pogies could be a possibility on the endangered species. No. Yeah, good. No. I heard, and that, that's a possibility that I'm hoping that it's not. Yeah. Men, men hating for certain are not being considered for, uh, for listening. Uh, uh, and neither are sea heron. River heron uh, are being looked at by NOAA Fisheries right now. Uh, they received a petition um, from environmental groups to uh, ask for a listing designation. They're in the process of doing that review right now. Um, my goal and the state's goal will be to oppose that listing. Uh, I have one more question too. Uh, how can you bring up 1% of the working waterfront into a better percentage for the working fishermen 
up and down the coast of Maine. Now you're working on that from the, from the governor's point of view and down to the down to a local point of view and trying to expose more fisheries for and more uh, uh, more openings so that fishermen can have more assets to the shore. So access to the resource and access to the shore, obviously, two very different things. The working waterfront program that we have in place right now to actually secure access uh, remains a priority. Uh, we're running out of money within that program. Um, whether there will be additional money through bonding is yet to be seen. The governor will make the, the governor will make the determination on all bonding uh, once uh, the budget has been finalized. But we have a lot more work to do on the budget. Uh, we continue to be under a lot of pressure on the department as far as budgets because of other areas um, where a lot more general funds are being spent elsewhere in the state for a very small piece of that puzzle. Uh, but anyway, once the, once the budget gets figured out, the governor will make a determination on the final bond package. And I'm hoping that we'll see continued support for working on the uh, Regarding access to the resource, obviously, a lot of the resources are pretty damn good. A lot of juveniles on the bottom still, uh, and, uh, and landings are record high. Um, profitability stinks. Uh, boat prices are terrible. Um, and those are issues that we also have to address. A lot of the other resources, as everybody in this room knows, are, are tiered. They're not healthy. Um, we need to ensure that we can find ways to sustain those resources so we can continue to add, have our fishermen access them um, in the long run. And then hopefully we'll see with value added, we'll work with value added and processing, with more of that in state, we'll see a continued economic benefit from the coast and the entire state. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank you. Commissioner. Paul Fisherman's voice. Um, in uh, 1969, the Stratton Commission, they, they, they came out with a vision for American fisheries, the least number of vessels harvesting the greatest amount of resource at the highest net profit. And uh, when I was on the Sea Urchin Council, we, we could never get a vision going. It was really hard to come up with regulations and trying to try regulate a fishery that we didn't know what we were trying to create. And I guess what I'm getting at is, what is the DMR's vision? What's the state of Maine's vision for our fisheries? Um, you said October 1969. Yeah. I was. Yeah, I was too. No, so I didn't read it. I didn't read it. I came out. Uh, so the vision is, is prosperity, coastal prosperity. Uh, do we want to see a few boats catching a, a, a lot of fish? No. That changes the entire coastal region. We don't want two or three new benefits. We want healthy coastal communities and healthier coastal communities that we have. How the fisheries fits into that is sustainability and access. More that talk about shrimp, my sort of state want to talk about you know, shrimp. The issue with it, it's one of the last open access fisheries that we have. But the way the fleet is made up, and with all the access and all the potential effort, how do we continue to ensure sustainability and how do we make sure that we're not overfishing it on an annual basis? How do we grow the resource? and ensure that we have access from the fleet. It's different, I think, for both segments of the industry, whether it's the trappers or the dragons. So in this case, I think what we need to do is, is have a DM conversation with the industry. It's not up to me to make the final determination of what those industries are going to look like. I want to hear from those industries and how they believe we should manage it and how, and how access to how access is going to be achieved in the future for, for an individual. Um, can it withstand the amount of access that it has right now? <coughs> Not at 2,200 metric tons a year. Um, because the fishery is going to last even less of the time than the last edition. So our goal is to figure out what the right amount of participation is. Not limiting this to just a few boats, but more boats. <coughs> But how can we ensure that that fishery lasts longer throughout the year? 
and that conversation needs to happen with the drivers and the drivers. So, I don't know if I answered the question. Uh, Gary Libby, uh, Matt, you guys got it on shrimp. <laughs> That's kind of what I wanted to address anyway. Um, I like the shrimp fishery like I do. I'm a ag participant. Um, I know that there's been conversations about limited entry within that because of the open access part of it. Yeah. And my question is, one that we've had this winter off and on in a couple of meetings about the legislature having to approve the limited entry thing, and what would be the timeline, and would there still be a component for open access and all those things, and when can we start having these meetings? Uh, tomorrow morning at 8.30 or 9 o'clock, I think, is when we start. <laughs> um, we have had a lot of those meetings uh, over the course of the last several months. Um, I initiated uh, with a motion uh, several months ago at the trim section meeting. I uh, initiated an addendum process, which will include the conversations of limited entry. Um, but more importantly, um, I, I believe we need to figure out a way to get state by state vote. Then we can truly control our own destiny as far as this vision is concerned. We main roughly has roughly 85 to 90 percent of the uh, land value uh, or the land needs of over the history of this fishery. Um, I believe we can do a damn good job managing in state. Um, and I think the conversations, like I said earlier, the conversations around the new entry uh, need to happen with both segments of, of, of the of the shrimp industry. Um, because I think both segments have very different ideas on how to move forward whether it's modified ITQs, whether it's a straight limit of entry system, um, now's the time to start having this conversation. The legislature does have to act on it. They're not going to deal with it this session. So next year, we're going to be in a situation where we will have an open access fishery. What, what we can do, though, if we can get it in place in time, is having, having a state quota and then having a further conversation about splitting that folder up between gear type and splitting, potentially even having a conversation about uh, a geographical distribution. Uh, I know families folks want to have that conversation. I think we need to put it on the table. <laughs>